In this lecture, we're going to begin to simulate convective heat transfer, and we're going to revisit the laminar and turbulent boundary layers that we discussed and simulated in the third module of the course. And whereas there was no temperature differences between the solid surface and the fluid at that stage, we're going to add a temperature surface to induce heat transfer. And then we're going to look at what happens to the temperature and velocity behavior of the flow field and uh, and apply the analysis and uh, and uh, knowledge that we gained in the first lecture of this module uh, to the results from the simulation. And to begin, we can just take the geometry from that previous lecture. So hopefully you've saved it, uh, but if you haven't, it's not very difficult to recreate the geometry itself. The analysis took a lot longer. But so you can go ahead and open, uh, the flat plate file. And uh, looks like flow simulation is open for me already. For some of you, you will have to uh, open flow simulation, but just give this a moment while it loads. All right, so here's our model. We can take a section view. And we'll just recall the way we'd set this up previously is we had inflow of air, which was a uh, standard uh, temperature, pressure and so on, and flowing in at a velocity of 15.24 meters per second. In the, the, the pipe was then, or the, not the pipe, this is sort of like a 2D flow that we were simulating, which was achieved with two sections, or we used two sections to, to achieve the flow. And uh, in the first section, we had ideal walls all around the flow. And that means that there was no shear force at the wall in the sec for any of the surfaces. And in the second section, once that flow had already been introduced into the domain, uh, it approached the plate. And at that point, we introduced a flat plate boundary layer at the bottom surface and left the other surfaces to be ideal. And so that induced friction at the plate or there was there is a frictional force at the plate due to the and the, which results in the no slip condition uh meaning that you have this uh shear with the bottom layer of fluid and the next layer of fluid and the, so then you quickly slow down layers of fluid and that's due to viscous forces and then that creates what we call the boundary layer and so that boundary layer was very very thin and now we want to and and Yes, okay, so we had a very thin boundary layer. That's all I really wanted to say about that. Now what we'd like to do is uh, raise the temperature of that bottom plate so that there's a temperature difference. And then, like I said, we're going to simulate convection. The first thing to do is to find the real wall condition. And you can double click that to edit it. And you're gonna wanna select the adjust wall temperature option. And it will start off defaulting to SolidWorks default temperature and we're gonna enter 320 degrees Kelvin. So you can accept that. And we'll also insert a global goal uh, that we want the average heat flux to converge. So accept average heat flux as a global goal. And the reason why is that, uh, you know, you want a goal that says that the properties of the, of, the tr of the simulation that are relevant to our analysis should be stable. So we should make sure that those features are being resolved adequately. And so in this case, the heat flux is going to uh, be related to and capture a lot of that behavior. Um, but last time, one of the things we did is we uh, made sure that we uh, sort of ramped up that computational goal uh, to a very high precision, uh, which was necessary because, again, of the relative size of the boundary layer to the, uh, to the whole domain and the uh, magnitudes of, of some of the features involved. So we're going to do the same thing for heat transfer. And you've got a solve button, which I've clicked here. And then you want to click uh, calculation control options. And now this may or may not be expanded, but there's this goals criteria tab. And we just created this uh, global goal, average heat flux three. Uh, last time, like I said, we had the shear stress and we manually set this to a low shear stress so that it requires very fine precision and shear stress in order to converge. We wanna do the same thing with heat flux. 
So select the manual and then enter a heat flux of 0 0.01 watts per meter squared. And with that, we don't have to change the mesh. Everything should be good uh, in that sense. So we can go ahead and run. And you want to just ensure that you're initializing a new mesh so that we get new calculation. And away we go. Uh, it might spit up an error at you, which you can ignore. And then you can open the solver and insert a goal table. And once again, we can watch uh, the convergence behavior of the simulation. And you can see that the mass flow rate was very easy to satisfy, uh, but the shear stress and heat flux are a uh, little bit more stringent criteria based on the options that we've set. And so it takes a bit longer for those to be uh, realized. So we will wait a moment for this to complete. And there we have it. And you should have an average value of the average heat flux of approximately 195. So I have 195.844 watts per meter squared. You really should be in that neighborhood. All right, so we can exit out of that. And now we wanna go through the results of that simulation. So if we open up the results tab, uh, we will have some results that were left over from the last time that we did this simulation. And you can show that cut plot. So let's uh, give ourselves a nicer view here. So this is a temperature cut plot that we created last time. Uh, it's actually also nice to show this mesh on top of the cut plot. And it looks like display lighting is still set off. And then we will zoom in very closely. Oops. So again, like I said, we have, and, and like you saw last time and uh, probed in your assignment further, we've got this very thin layer of air where you have a velocity distribution. And you've got the free stream velocity essentially almost everywhere in the plate. But then right at the surface, you've got this sort of parabolic distribution where viscous layers are creating a non-uniform profile of velocity. Uh, what we'd like to do now, and I'll just zoom to fit again, is hide that cut plot and insert another cut plot. And this time we want to look at temperature. So let's do same number of contours. Uh, I believe we did an XY plane set to 0.1 meters. That might have only been for the mesh, but it's not gonna make a difference. So now that bottom temperature is the free stream temperature. And so you can see this is inverted. Before the velocity was the free stream velocity almost everywhere. And now the free stream temperature is almost everywhere, but it's lower because the plate is hot. So uh, if we zoom in, we're gonna see a very, and actually, well, I'll comment on this in a moment. Uh, so if we zoom in again to the very bottom, we see the same sort of behavior where we have a very thin boundary layer, but this is now a thermal boundary layer. So they look almost the same and phenomenologically, they're quite related to each other. But we've got the same kind of behavior where we have this development of a thermal uh, boundary layer, therm temperature gradients in the fluid and a very thin strip of air flowing over that hot plate. And if the air was totally still, if you slowed down the flow, that boundary layer could, uh, could grow quite a bit. Uh, one thing I would like to note is that the temperature differences we're looking at here are very small. So we discussed in the previous lecture how one of the ways that uh, convection can be difficult to study and difficult to characterize is that there is a advanced coupling between the fluid mechanics and the heat transfer. And that's because of many reasons, but one reason is that um, the density of your fluid will change. You could also have you know, dynamic viscosity changing, specific heat changing, but um, the, the primary, uh, like you're never gonna really be, well, not never. It's very uncommon for the temperature range to be big enough well, even that's pushing it. 
a lot of times the temperature range is small enough that you can just treat those parameters as fixed, especially if you're doing some sort of an analytical treatment on paper. But when you're simulating it, you can just change the fluid properties everywhere because we're not trying to actually obtain a functional representation of something. We just want to see which uh, flow behavior in our computational domain satisfies the equations. Um, but so the density change can be appreciable. So even if you have like a like a 50 degree temperature or something, or even a couple degrees in a very slow flow, uh, that density change is going to cause there to be a buoyant force, which will, uh, you know, if you have a hot plate and totally still air, all of a sudden you're going to get circulation of air because the hot air is going to rise. It's going to be lower in density. It's going to float to the top. Cold air is going to settle and you get currents. So there's a complicated coupling um, in general. In our case, the temperature range is slow. That density effect was small. And so the velocities that we saw are almost the same as the velocities we saw from the uh, previous simulation. And you could check if you want and compare, and you know they might even be the same to machine epsilon. It's really a very tiny effect on the velocity field uh, that this very small density difference will induce. Um, so that's not why we're looking at this. But that is a complication that can arise in the context of convection. And that's one reason why CFD is essential to the uh, to the simulation of complicated heat transfer scenarios that involve fluid flow. But for now, let's hide that cut plot. And we can actually get rid of these XY plots from the previous uh, simulation. And I will hide the mesh as well. Uh, and let's insert another XY plot. And now we wanna take this edge at the end of the domain and we want to look at the temperature and the x direction velocity. And one problem that some people have been having in the assignments is they use velocity instead of x direction velocity. So especially when you're talking about recirculation or something, this might be important because the velocity, no x, y, z, is a magnitude. So it's always going to be positive. It's, you know, square root of x velocity squared plus y velocity squared plus z velocity squared. So it's sort of like the length of that it's not sort of like, it is the length of the velocity vector. And, um, and we uh, want to know the signed velocity in the x direction, not the magnitude of that vector, even though the, the y and z components are effectively negligible here. Um, so, okay, temperature, x velocity. We also want to select the uh, x axis of our simulation to be, of our data output to be model Y, so that it's uh, aligned with that output. And then let's go ahead and click show, make sure we're getting the plots we want, that looks right. And then we can export to Excel. So enable editing to get at the data. And I'm going to start to build, which you should too, a single workbook where we're going to collect all of the data that we are simulating. So this is laminar flow, and we're going to grab the plot data. So copy that guy into your new workbook. I'm just going to delete these headers. And uh, so I like to be fairly consistent. And you can actually leave a column here because we're going to make a, a dimensionless values of these uh, quantities. But for now, you want to just put in Y. And then uh, we have here the temperature which is in Kelvin, and we have Y in meters, and then we have the velocity in the X direction. Oh, is my X key not working? Okay, and then we have the uh, X direction velocity in meters per second, and uh, this can be made into a subscript, control one, subscript, okay. 
And I like to be very precise about formatting these things. So I'm just going to merge things, bold things, center things. And it's just nicer to look at your plots when they are arranged like this. And then let's save that to, oh, oh boy. So we're gonna save that to the working directory that we're using. And in my case, I've made a folder module four. So I'll save this as thermal BL. And before I forget, we should also go file save as on this. Uh, so we can accept that and then we can go file save as and make a thermal boundary layer part. And the last thing we're going to do in this lecture is export um, uh, heat flux, surface heat flux information. That turns out to be a bit of a strange procedure uh, for reasons that are beyond me uh, that have to do with SolidWorks's uh, method of handling that property. So first thing let's do is let's get rid of the surface view. And you want to select the walls on either side of the uh, actual real wall surface. So you can see I selected, hit shift, selected the other one, and now they're both selected. And then you want to go insert surface mid surface and uh, uncheck knitted surface, hit OK. And now if we look at a cut plot, you should be able to see it's stuck a plane halfway through there. Do you see that? There's a plane halfway through. Okay, check okay so that you can see that plane with your, uh, with your view. And I like to reset this. Uh, now you wanna select the bottom surface, the bottom line of, of this plane here. Uh, okay, actually you just want to just select the plane and then you want to click insert curve split line. Uh, so once you've selected the plane, you can then select the face. Oh, you want to do intersection. So type of split intersection. Now we can select the face. There we go. Uh, natural is fine. Click okay. Accept that. Close that. Now you want to add another XY plot. And this time we're going to do surface heat flux. There we are. Uh, and again, set the X length. This time you want it to be model X. And click show. Oh, you can just select that line there. Good. Click show, and we're going to export this uh, to Excel as well. Get an uncheck surface e flux. Okay, so that's all fine. Take the plot data, you can select that and copy it. Actually, uh, I believe we wanted to have this resolved at 30 points. So before you do, do that, just change the resolution to 30 points. Show that again. Now let's export to Excel. Enable editing, plot data, and there you have it. So now just copy that, go to your working Excel document, and you can paste. Oh, so I'd like to actually move that down one cell.
And here we have X in meters and uh, shear stress is going to, or sorry, surface heat flux is gonna be Q double prime, uh, which has units of watts per meter squared. And uh, I will make that into a superscript and format these the way I like them as always. And you can see that I've left some columns here for calculating other things later. You don't have to do that, you can add them in later. But with that, I will save it. And that concludes the, the laminar portion of the simulation.